these were some of my earliest memories in childhood. At the dinner table, my parents are telling me, their firstborn son, why they immigrated to the US from their home country of Korea. They wanted me to become a physician. This was their American dream. <laughs> Man, we were poor, right? So my sister and I, we ate a lot of kimchi and rice. We drank a lot of soda pop. Uh, my dad drank cheap beer and smoked way too many cigarettes. And after years and years of telling me that they wanted me to become a physician, I too believed in this dream that this was a path to a better life. I just didn't realize this path was gonna be so long. If you add this all up, it equals 15 years, which happens to be the same amount of time that the television show ER ran on the air. It's still the longest medical drama in TV history. So like this guy, I became an ER doctor. And at first, I was really happy. I really enjoyed taking care of patients. But then I grew frustrated, cynical, and even angry. I, I started to burn out. And I think that medical school did not prepare me to practice medicine in today's broken healthcare system. So in the first two, year, two years of medical school, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant of information and then vomiting that out for the next two years. And then you enter in this hierarchy in the hospital where you follow senior physicians and never challenge their authority. In order to fix our healthcare system, we need to redesign medical school. And the formula, the recipe that we use to make doctors has not changed in over 100 years. This is Thomas Aiken's Gross Clinic. It's one of the most famous American paintings. Standing is Dr. Samuel Gross, lecturing medical students at the very same medical school in Philadelphia where I happen to teach. If we fast forward 140 years, we still put medical students into these large lecture halls where they passively receive information from a master educator. The only difference now is that they all have laptops and they're probably checking Facebook when we are lecturing to them. Current medical students, your future doctors, were born in the 1990s. They are digital natives. And they're used to, when they need help, uh, when they don't know something, they're used to turning first to their smartphones and the internet, not their senior physicians. I'm trying to hack the century-old education system for making doctors. Two years ago, I started a design thinking program, the first of its kind for a medical, medical school. We apply the way that designers make products or architects create buildings to healthcare. Designers. Uh, This create with designers and architecture firms, maker spaces, and design studios. We reframe problems that we see as design challenges. This invites a sense of optimism that we can actually design a better system. I insert students into our messy healthcare system so they can experience its problems firsthand. <coughs> This allows us to take on problems like, how might we improve the patient experience in a hospital? Or how might we, um, how might we uh, improve the waiting room? So we go through these rapid cycles of the design thinking process, iteration, empathy, prototyping. And we love to prototype. Uh, prototyping gives form to our ideas. And it doesn't always need to be high tech. Prototyping can take many forms like making a sketch up of an exam room, storyboarding a solution, making screenshots of a smartphone application, or even using Legos and glue guns to make physical mock-ups. Students are using 3D printing to make functional hands and to make anatomical models. They are programming microcomputers and sensors to make new types of medical devices. Think about the last time you were a patient. Maybe you're in your doctor's office, maybe you're in a hospital or in an ER. I bet you the design of that physical space was not that great. We are pairing architects with medical students 
to redesign these spaces, together we co-created a digital mapping tool that allows us to understand how the healthcare environment, how that healthcare ecosystem impacts the behaviors of patients and doctors and nurses. So this is uh, where I work, and as I mentioned before, I started to burn out as a physician, and what was causing this burnout? I felt that I wasn't making a difference in people's lives. I was keeping them from dying from complications of disease, but I wasn't helping to, to live. And I noticed that patients from certain areas of the city were a lot sicker than other patients. They seemed to suffer more from chronic diseases, suffer more from violence. It shows that where you live is the best predictor of your health. It's better than genetics. So if you live at the bottom of this map in Center City, Philadelphia, life expectancy is about 88 years. Travel north just two miles, that life expectancy drops to 68 years. It's a 20 year difference just by your zip code. But I was trained as an emergency medicine specialist. What can I really do about this? And despite what the public thinks, doctors are not equipped to really make our communities healthier. Better design can improve public health. John Snow was a London physician who stopped the cholera epidemic in the 1800s by thinking like a designer. He used data visualization to map cholera cases and identify a contaminated water pump that was infecting his city. Doctors need to use human-centered design to make our cities healthier. If you live in this neighborhood, you are more likely to be sicker have more complications from disease, and have poorer health outcomes. Last winter, we worked with these amazing kids who go to a school right next to that vacant lot that you just saw. Uh, the school was like the schools I went to when I was a kid. And together, we co-designed solutions that might prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes and obesity. We made these device location trackers we um, 3D printed the cases and programmed a microcomputer, and students used these trackers to map healthy food locations in their neighborhood. And I hope that these kids will not end up like those sick patients I see in my ER suffering from chronic diseases. Projects like this and cross-boundary collaborations would not have been possible within the old paradigm of educating doctors. By thinking alike designers, doctors more creative, and they can think outside the box. The superpower of the doctor of the future will be the ability to, create, to creatively think and problem solve. Having this skill will not only allow us to fix our healthcare system, but make our communities healthier. Thank you.